church, and like I always said behind the pulpit, buy your seats, and also we missed you last Sunday, didn't see you here, I know what happened, but uh, again, thank you for coming back, thank you for being here with us, and I would like to uh, share a quick testimonies, or maybe like an announcement, before we go to our first song, I would like to be our first for this month of July, you can see in our programs. Uh, for July, Sister Carol is best, uh, Brother Domingue the 10th, Brother Renato the 14th, and uh, Nana Carmen is the 16th this past few days. Happy birthday to you all, and I know God bless you more, and uh, been so much uh, years, days, and months that passed, and how God provided things that we need, the things that we desire for, so uh, we thank the Lord for that, and uh, we just need them somewhere, again, uh, just greet them again if you missed it. And also, this coming, uh, this could be the third Sunday, right? Third Sunday of July. And you know how time flies, and uh, you will notice after this month is Christmas. Uh, already, so, uh, so be aware of our days. And uh, we thank the Lord for everything did for us, and the, uh, what you call the uh, procession guidance for us. This coming Saturday, this coming Sunday, or Saturday, uh, Men's Fellowship will be in Brother Gabby's house around uh, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we will, we will uh, look forward for the Asu Caldereta. Uh, whatever thing, uh, fried rice, whatever thing for breakfast. Men's Fellowship, breakfast fellowship for men. Pastor, how about the ladies? If you want to come, you are not welcome. Let's get it. You can come too, you can come too and uh, just uh, mingle with us. And uh, we will resume our men's fellowship. And this is only an hour. An hour and three hours, you know. <laughs> an hour and a half could be. And uh, we would like to be here. Uh, if you know, if we can find our home around the area. <laughs> uh, and uh, what do you call this place? North Hills. North Hills. North Hills. Uh, Doberman Place, is that right? Uh, what's the other street? I don't forget the street, but I'm saying like, um, I didn't able to get the address, but talk to you about the address. If you want a carpool, then we can do that also. 8.30 to, to 10 o'clock maybe, and um, we can just do some art fellowship together. And also, ladies, your $5. Uh, if you donated yet, give those uh, every month. And uh, I saw the list there. I didn't see a check. Some of the names of my... <laughs> Where's the check? Maybe the one be good. I don't know. But uh, let's don't forget those things. And uh, next month, next month, uh, by July, by August, who wants to go to the beach? Raise your hand. Who wants to go to the beach? All right. My question is this. You want a second week of August? Or first week of August? Or not at all? Now, if you want to go to the beach, it's coming uh, this August, let us know. And uh, we're thinking about second week of August, second week. And uh, we're just going to be there and eat uh, mango, watermelon, uh, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll do this in the Suma Beach where we go every year. Um, if you want to go invite someone with you, we'll do this together. Uh, if I have work, we, I will miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just want to be out the church once in a while, okay? So I mean, like, I'll, I'll try to be there, you know, great to be in the afternoon, then not uh, the afternoon, then uh, we just want to have fun, at least, you know, once we at church thing, uh, bring your own food, whatever you can bring, uh, just have fellowship together as a church. And uh, we missed this last year. We never had last year because of COVID thing. But I mean, like, it's still the COVID still there. But I mean, like, you know, you can stay for like an hour or two if you like. Uh, just um, make those fellowship with us. Um, if there's any changes, let, uh, let you know and uh, we'll go from there. The second week of August, second week of August, uh, you can be there at 6 in the morning if you like. You know, as soon as you can if you want to do that. And uh, if you want to swim with sharks, it's okay too. So we I mean, like, whatever that uh, we can do, this is the second week uh, second, uh, second of August. And, uh, if you have any plans and ideas, again, I always should be in the pulpit. Just let me know. We'll do this together as a church. And uh, as we, again, have fellowship at the same time, growing together in Christ. Did I miss something? Our skills, also our food. Don't forget that there's group three. 
next week will be the last group for everybody's group and the four and birthdays, uh, birthdays and uh, and uh, again if you want to bring something you you know you can do that too no pass no and uh, no no pass <laughs> and also no casting you know no and um, flowers flowers is still fresh from last week so uh, if you want to bring some flowers once in the blue moon uh, bring some flowers to the Lord and uh, you know for me for the church let's all stand up please and let's sing the song there's part of the blood and then uh, the dog in prayer. Then the First answer. Would you be free from the burden of sin? This far in the blood, far in the blood. This wonderful far in the blood. There is far, far, wonder working far in the blood of the land. Father, the songs that we are we going to sing, the, the choir that you sing for us, we, we ask Father that you bless in our heart, especially Lord, your word that is given through us, given to us this morning. We pray Jesus, that you bless them. Once again, Lord, those people on their way, may your protection and guidance be upon them. And we want to bring you back the honor, praise, and glory. We just name we pray. Amen. Let's call the choir this morning sing for us.
get to heaven and uh, let's all stand up please I've uh, seen song together if you're not going to heaven stay sit down <laughs> if you go out to heaven so stand up please let's sit down last answer love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed it prepared for us a place when we all
Okay, thank you very much. Indeed, as the Lord said in John 14, 1 to 3. Right? It's the glorious appearing, the glorious hope for every believer. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I would go and prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again, is it? that you will, will receive you unto my own, that where I am, there you may be. So we're waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for hope every Sunday on top of our choir. If God has given you the talent to sing, you can sing by solo, duet, trio. And uh, if you're a member of the choir, then uh, give the best that we could. And that's it. Uh, also, we'll be seeing some new changes uh, in the coming month of August going up. Uh, by next month, we're going to resume our Lord's Supper or Lord's Table every first Sunday of the month. So that will be in August. We'll be having our Lord's Supper. And uh, to those of you who are gifted of some uh, musical instruments, like uh, Queer Mel, we'll be having a guitar here. Not the guitar of electric or whatever it may be, a guitar that they can use. If you know how to use accordion and flute or whatever it may be, then let's use it all for the Lord as long as uh, we use it appropriately and properly. So we do not allow drums here. I stand uh, strong for that. So at least that we have to know that if you know how to play guitar, flute, harmonica, or accordion you can play, tell me if you want to play accordion. I have an accordion. So it's a very special one. So I guess that's it. And uh, don't forget, uh, again, remind you, because it's the birthday of Peter Caro, Brother Rene, Brother Tommy, and others, no pass. Okay, did bring food this coming Sunday. And if not, uh, Brother Angelo will assist. Okay, no problem on that. Okay, everybody? Amen. So that's the way it is. Uh, also, by August, we'll be having our invitation because uh, they only remove it because of the pandemic. But now it's uh, going gradually for a uh, normal thing. So the end of the preaching will be giving a uh, privilege and also a chance for people who would like to give themselves to the Lord, not only for salvation, but for our dedication to God. So those are the things, because you might be asking, how come we don't have invitation, Pastor? But by August, we're going to get started on all those things. Have you ever noticed, Brother Ben said, we'll also be having our uh, Bible verse to quote. Okay, those verses, uh, you know why Jesus was uh, weeping? Uh, Jesus wept? Because you don't memorize verses. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. That's why he's weeping. <laughs> So memorize good verses so that he won't be but just kidding. Uh, Jesus wept because of his burden and love for the souls. So that's it. Okay. So we have two Sundays today and next Sunday. And then we're going to be done on the book of Romans 12. 1. And I'm so grateful and thankful to God that uh, we had this series of ours. And also, um, I'm uh, finished a lot of things about uh, the thing that I have to do, not only for our church, for the pastors uh, who are being mentored to their master degrees, and planning also to have a, a radio uh, thing that I'm trying to apply about for license and everything. As so Brother Ben also is helping on our YouTube. Because uh, I was blessed when I was still a young Christian back then in early. 60s and uh, if you know the quartet haven of rest and um, there's a song 
and then there's some sort of uh, encouragement of other things and so on. But unfortunately, it's gonna be Tagalog. So sorry, Brother Peter, Brother Lee, but you can watch. Uh, I'll do that. Um, we're trying to set everything and try to buy the things, uh, the equipments that I need, uh, having in the studio, so that you would know. It's more on encouragement and other things in Tagalog. And then there's a song, and then they can listen, encourage them, then they can ask some prayers and questions. So I've been praying for this for quite long already, and God has provided the need, and uh, that's no problem to our church. So don't you worry about that. So geez, the Lord has uh, been so good of that, so I'm very willing to give more of my time. And I'll do it to, to start with at least twice a week first. Then it's going to go very, very early. Okay? So let's all stand up, please. And uh, it's 11 30. Romans 12 1. And uh, another thing is I can read this now uh, with my sandals. Where is my sandals? My eyeglass. Uh, anyway, it's okay. It says in uh, Romans 12 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Father in heaven, as we come to you, the throne of your grace, allow us, Heavenly Father, to offer our uh, thanksgiving, our uh, praises to you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is continuously convicting us, molding and changing us by your grace through the Word of God that you have given to us. Thank you for the love of your people. I pray, Father, that you would uh, continuously help them to become more intimate in their fellowship and in their relationship with you. Thank you so much also for this particular passage, uh, which is all about consecrated for God. It's just a great privilege for us to be separated for a holy and high purpose, to be used for your honor and for your glory. Lord, we do ask you for all the shortcomings, words, and even actions, an attitude that has never been a blessing in the past, Lord, we do ask for your forgiveness. On the other hand, we are so thankful that you are in our midst today because you said where there are two or three gathering in your name, you are in the midst of them. And we know that we are stepping on the holy ground and you are in our midst today. To those who are watching, praying, Father, that you bless them and uh, meet their spiritual needs. To those who are sick, I pray, Father, that you would touch and heal them. And to those who have problems that maybe don't want to comfort them, that maybe don't want to give them the wisdom that they would trust you 100%, that they can see a solution to the problem, that you would help them. Again, Father, we give the glory to you and help us and hide thy servant with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we take your seat? Okay, no problem. I have emergency here. In case. You see that? There you go. So we are studying about the consecrated for God. We've done about the reading. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God and the bestowing, uh, that now we are on the blessing of offering yourself. It says, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, now we are here now, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. 
So the word sacrifice, in its simple uh, meaning, it means uh, offering. So the backing of Apostle Paul for every believer is to offer themselves to God. It's another thing that we know that why God did save us, there is a plan and there is a purpose. And many Christians are not very much aware and conscious of that. They know that salvation is essential, it is needed. It is only through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They know that it is important also to serve the Lord as we are giving many times and um, do things. And they know also about sharing the gospel, to read the Bible every day and to pray every day. Those are what we call our uh, normal obligations and duties to God as we become a Christian, coming to the church is one of them. That is our uh, natural obligation uh, before God that we don't need to be invited to and uh, be reminded, oh, come to the church because if we are believers, that is already our duty and uh, as a Christian. But one of the things that many Christians are not so much aware probably, I would say, and conscious is on how are they able to offer themselves before God every day. That's one thing. Yes, we have to serve. Yes, we have to do something for the Lord. Yes, we have to read the Bible. We have to share the Word of God. But by offering ourselves is the very basic that we have to understand so much so that when we serve the Lord, we know well that what we are doing is the right thing and thing that pleases God. That's why the last part of that would be on Sunday. He said that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What is next? Holy and then acceptable unto God. Because if your life is a holy life, lives a holy life, and then it would be acceptable, then that's the only way that yours and my services to God would be what? pleasing to God, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Then we can say, indeed, the service that I have to do to the Lord matters because it did meet the criteria wherein God wants us to meet. But we will be discussing today about uh, uh, what the Lord said through Paul, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. The blessing of offering yourself. Now, things to consider. Why is it? Because in the Old Testament, we don't have time. I don't need to re, uh, put it back and flash back and then explain to you why the animals are being killed, the blood is being put on the ground, and it's being offered. It's a dead uh, animal that is to be offered to God. But here in our text, it demands a living sacrifice. Because uh, those things were passed of the, uh, the, uh, the part of the past, that has been fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ when He died at the cross of Calvary. And then we had a complete redemption to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that Christ was offered once and for all. So there's no need for all those things that we're going to do what they used to do in the Old Testament to kill an animal and then shed the blood and then cook it and then offer it to God. What is being demanded, what is being encouraged and exhorted to every child of God, to every Christian now, is that we are to sacrifice or we are to offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. So, what is that? things to consider. It means when we are about to give ourselves to God and when we are about to 
obey and to comply to the Lord's demand, it means without any conditions to God. You, when you present yourself to God, you don't make any conditions to the Lord. You know, other people would say, Lord, I would serve thee if you would bless me. I would serve thee if you would answer my prayer to you, which is also according to you, will anyway for us to work, and I'm looking for a job, and if you would bless me, and if you would do this and do that, and then I'm going to give, and I'm going to present, and I'm going to serve you. No, sir. When, when, when Paul said that you are to present your bodies, that means it is 100% because it is God who demands. Let me ask you a very simple thing. Do you think God demands something from His people for them to be destroyed or not for their own good and not for their best? Whenever the Lord offers something, it is always for the good and the benefit of the people. When God planned the plan of redemption, even in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.15, promising about the coming Redeemer, then all of the people around the world did actually what benefit to this, to those who are going to receive and believe what Christ did at the cross of Calvary, that He gave His life, shed His blood, and then the Bible says that you and I who would receive Christ by faith and by repentance of our sin will be having eternal life. Everybody benefits. So when the Lord, on the other hand, demands something or asks something from you to do, there is always a corresponding and appropriate promise on that. For example, have you know that if you are a soul winner? Now, listen to this. If you are a regular soul winner, one of the promises of the Lord in the Bible is that the Lord is going to meet your needs every day. Did you see that? Not only souls that you are praying to be one for Christ, and that can be seen in the book of John, chapter 15, as well, and 16. He said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And the Bible says, Whatever you ask, God is going to give it to you. That is only one of the promises. One of the promises is that we're going uh, to have products. Uh, uh, in the book of... Uh, uh, Psalm 126 verses 5 and 6 They that sow in tears what? shall reap in joy he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seeds what? shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him that's why soul winning is a very exciting word for God and plus on top of that think about it you are bringing and helping people uh, to be punished in eternity of hell, to be brought into the kingdom of God, it, that you and I became the very instrument of God. That's one thing. But sometimes people don't take it too seriously. So, when the Bible says that you have to present, it means I had to give myself or I had to offer myself to God without making any condition, not if, but, or of. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, the Lord made it this way in 10.23. Jeremiah 10.23, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. It's very clear. Jeremiah he said, I know that the way of man is not supposed to be for himself. When God demands from his people, when God, when God promised salvation, he never asked Adam and Eve, do you want salvation? He never asked them either. He was the one who already spearheaded and initiated to make the plan of salvation and to be fulfilled at the death of Christ and to be implemented by the power of the Holy Spirit today. 
that we are doing. And thank God, we became one of the recipients of that grace of the Lord, according to the book of Ephesians 2, 8, that it is not our works, but it is by grace that we are all saved. Very clear, not of our works. But, please do come. Please do offer yourself to the Lord. Lord, if you would uh, promote me. Lord, if you would increase my salary. Lord, if I would get that thing, then I would give myself, I would serve you. That's why the Bible says living. We're going to go on that later. Secondly, uh, on another verse, in Luke chapter 9, 23 and 24. I like this. Jesus said, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him what? Deny himself. And take up his cross, not when you like it, when you feel it good. But the Lord said, Would you be willing to offer to sacrifice to David? He said, Daily and follow me. There are only two things. Either you have to follow Christ or Christ will follow you. <laughs> you know what is follow, brother? The Lord will spank you. Okay, verse 24. That's in Tagalog. We're just kidding. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for Christ's sake, the Bible says the same shall save it. Do you think the Lord would call you for nothing? And do you think God would call you and use you for no reason at all? In the first place, we are bought with a price. We are God's property. So God has all the right for you and for me to be used by God. So secondly, not only it means without any conditions, it means without any confusion to yourself. Never be confused. Why you be confused when the Lord said, I want you to offer yourself? Would you ever ask the Lord, why do you want me, Lord? There are a lot of people. There is pastor, and there are those workers, and there are those singers, and there are those choir members, and teachers, and so on, or uh, probably more, uh, I would say, spiritual Christians, and more mature Christians, that you could call them in order for them to serve you, and so on. But why me? We make it more personal. Because we are His. And the Lord is delighted enough for you to see how you would be able, in return, I would say directly, show your sense of gratitude and love for what God did to you by giving you forgiveness of sin and salvation and eternal life that has been provided to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you think you can pray for your salvation? I cannot pay for my salvation. Even if I give my life, I could not even must nor pay or uh, beyond and overpay my salvation to God. That's exactly what Paul said in the book of First Corinthians, chapter three. Look at it, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. I'm sorry, verses one to three. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Though I speak with the tongues of man and of angels and of not charity or no love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Then verse 2, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand, I might be grounded of God's word, that means, and I can speak, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Then in verse 3, And though I bestow, whether you're offering or whatever, he said, all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body, even yourself, to be burned and have not what? Charity, it profited me nothing. My friend, when the Lord demands something from us, it's the only simple thing. But lots of Christians are not so much conscious and aware how important it is for them to offer themselves to God. Unless, as I've said in the past, as we studied in verse 2, you have a toxic mind. Because a toxic mind is enmity with God. He would never do nor uh, comply to the demand of the Lord. So here, you don't need to be confused about that. Uh, is it really me? Yes, we are. We are God's children. In Ephesians 5, uh, 15 to 17. 
Ephesians 5. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as what? As wise, then, redeeming the time, because the days are evil, even our death, we don't even know the last time when we're going to be. But then the last verse, wherefore, Paul said to the Ephesian believers, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. He said, don't be dumb, don't be fool. See, Christianity is very simple for you to understand. God wants us to live godly before Him, to serve Him, and to give all the honor and the glory to Him every day. That is the simplicity of Christianity. To live godly before Him, to serve Him, to be a blessing to many, and to give all the honor and the glory to Him every day on top of what we have and the duties that we have of our own. And you should be very aware of that as a Christian. You may never say, I'm so busy, and that's why I don't have much time for that. Uh, God knows how preoccupied am I. But again, we don't have much time. You know the fact that who's going to sustain, who's going to make all those things uh, uh, to be uh, paid for and to be achieved so that you can fulfill all those things. It is all from God. But we are not very much aware of that. No wonder why the Bible says you have to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. And the second thing speaks about the temporal and material thing that you and I can have and enjoy that can be entrusted to us by God. I would, I would put it this way. Search the scripture. The Bible has nothing to say against that you have to have for money for yourself. The Bible never said it's bad for you to have... But if this is only the basis of your happiness in this life, and this is the very basis why you would be giving and serving God, then you have the wrong notion and perspective of serving God. Because things that we have today, as I always remind and tell other people, regardless of how much you have, these are just but temporal in the first place. They are not yours. They are God's property. You have to understand that very carefully. In Tagalog, huwag mong juicing yan mga yan. See, sometimes it costs you to be more proud when you have so much of things of yourself. You have forgotten that the day may never be for you regardless of what you have today. As I have said last Wednesday, I know some friends of mine, uh, they, they work hard and so on. The couple, to make the long story short, they were able to fulfill what is supposed to be fulfilled, to be left for their children if that will be the case. And they died and so happened. Even their children died because of an accident. And exactly what the Lord said in the book of Luke to the rich man, Tonight thy soul will be required of thee to whom you're going to leave those things now. Palagay niyo, hindi pag-aawayin niyo mga magkakamagana. And yet, you did purpose that, and you did plan, and you did work for hard for that. For what purpose? For yourself and for your pleasure and uh, for your satisfaction and for your children's children. There's nothing wrong about it. But still, the truth remains. Paul said, things that we see are temporal, but the things that we are not seeing are eternal. And that's one of the things that God has given, the eternal life that God has given to us. But while you are here, so be it. Praise God. That's why I always say, whenever I see you being blessed of God in terms of very slow thing of temporal and material thing, I always give you honor and the glory to God and telling them, telling God, Lord, thank you so much for blessing these children of yours. That in return, that they won't be too much second by this material and temporal thing, but they would learn to give back in return the due respect and praises to you. Nothing more, nothing less. And so, don't be confused of that. As it has been said, in James 1, 5 to 8. James 1, 5 to 8. And if any of you lack wisdom, not only in times of troubles and problems and difficulties, he said, ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall not be given in. The word upgraded not, that means do not doubt. 
that God could never do this for you. Have you ever experienced that you prayed something and said, and then at the back of your mind, I don't know whether gonna God gave it to me. And the devil knows how to work, huh? Into our minds. If you think that you do what is right and not for faith, what is acceptable unto God, does God deserve to be doubted that He can do things for you? What you're asking for? And the reason why you doubt because you don't completely believe that He can do it for you. Because you tend to do it for yourself and accomplish it for yourself. And then it says, another verse that would follow, if any of you, but let him ask in faith, nothing what? Wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. There is no permanency, there is no stability, always confused. I believe in God, but then at the back, I don't think so. How can we do this? I don't know whether God can make it. That's exactly, there is no stability and firmness of your faith. But look what he said, another verse that would follow. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Then another verse, a double, what? Minded man. Do you say stable? Is unstable in all his ways. Do you think the woman who gave her a uh, pennies to the Lord, not sister penny, two <laughs> mites to the Lord, she doubted that God would not be able and capable of meeting her needs from day to day? No. You know why? I'll tell you simply. Try to study it because for a long time of her life she has been that way. She knew that God's hand has never been shortened in meeting her need. That's why when she gave her two mites to the Lord, it's 100% from the heart. Sometimes God, oh, before I'm going to do that, because I have all these things. Your faith, my friend, is being tested. Don't be confused in offering yourself. Thirdly, it means without any contemplation. No condition, no confusion, Contemplation, it means don't have to thinking. If I would give it, what will I receive? What will I benefit? Or the contemplation, it means you have to delay for a while and think so much about it. If it is really good and if it is really appropriate and if it is really joyful for me to offer myself to God now. That's why when we are being asked to serve the Lord, you know, we're just smiling sometimes and laughing. It's because I know myself to program it. The Lord said, now is the time. Because tomorrow, again and again, it's a reality, may never be for you and for me. As we have the opportunity, the Bible says, let us do good, not only for all men. As we have the opportunity and opportunity to serve God don't think twice don't make delay the Lord said that you have to present your bodies that's why Paul was begging because a toxic mind would never consider that important how important for a person to be consecrated to be separated for a highly and a holy work and purpose to be used for God's glory. And yet, we treasure so much and value so much of our day-to-day -day temporal things that we do. Have you ever seen yourself on that? In short, in Tagalog, hindi ka ba nahihiya sa Panginoon? How He blesses you so much and yet, the small thing that God is expecting from you, you've never even tried to give it to Him. Then you even have a double thinking and uh, reasoning, uh, that's why you try to delay. Perhaps if I would be reaching those things, and perhaps if everything would be fine, then that I would serve the Lord. One time when I was in the Philippines, I asked one of our members, he said, I would serve the Lord, Pastor, if, I, if, I, if this problem of mine, I would be able to settle everything, then that's the time so that I won't be bothered by anything. My friend, problems are always there. They will never come out. It is only 
that God is giving you the mercy and the grace on how are you going to handle them. In the first place, it has been promised by God in the book of Corinthians that God is faithful that He will not allow you to be what? Suffered or to be tempted above that you are. But God is faithful that He will give you a way wherein you are able to escape. God is always there. If you tell me, uh, for example, okay, if I pay my rent tomorrow, then I have to serve the Lord. But after you pay, it will come up. There's always in there. But you're used to it. Why? Because with the proper guidance and the help of the Holy Spirit, God is helping you to understand things and to handle things, to handle things the way it should be. And you are being guided, graced, and blessed of God. So, those are the things to consider. He said, in the book of Micah 6, 8, Micah 6, 8, He had showed thee, O man, what is good, and what that the Lord required of you and me, but to do what? Justly, and to love mercy, and how are you going to live? To walk humbly with thy God. Hey, even if I would not go to the church, I, I got to survive. I got a lot of money. My friend, as Brother Ben said, who's going to benefit? Hey, it's no other than yourself. And who's going to lose? It's no other than yourself. Because God has already created, and God has already planned, and God has already set these things, the blessing and the cursing, that we can never change. It's a reality. So in presenting ourselves, do not contemplate. Now is the right time because tomorrow may never be for us. That's why I thank our choirs for giving their time. That's why I encourage you, if you have the uh, knowledge and if you have the gift of uh, playing, flute, whatever may, not only dancing is not allowed here. Okay? <laughs> Don't dance. Unless you want me to dance. <laughs> okay, it's not allowed here. It's a no-no. But whenever God has gifted you, please, I beg of you, like Paul said, offer that to God. At any capacity. You can sing. You can do something, whatever may, as long as you know, that would give glory to God to do so. Because the day would come when we face our Lord that we can hear you from the mouth of our Savior. Well then, thou faithful servant. God knows. Regardless of how busy and preoccupied you are, and yet within your mind and within your heart, why? Matthew 6.33, you seek and put God first in your heart. And he knows that. And what is the second part of that? All these things shall be added unto you. I was really praying for that registration. You don't know that I even, I just told you today. I'm applying for the license and so on. And it's to be having approved within four to five weeks. Took me time. How many years have we been here now? 17 years now, maybe, right? Are we almost? The first, when we get started, I told Brother Ben and uh, Brother Hippolyto uh, and others, and others and others, I want someday to have a radio broadcast. When I started the work in here, even though I have in my heart, but be patient, learn, and to wait. In God's time, God is going to give it to you. It took me no less than 18 years. And yet, everything has been provided by God. What more I can say for the Lord? Of His goodness. That's why, one of the reasons why I share you this, because it has been my personal experience. When you look at success only on the temporal things, I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. Because that is not the basis nor the measurement of success to God. Regardless of how well off you are. Now, what are the things, uh, not only things to consider, but the things to comply? When the Bible says, okay, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. Number one. 
The compliance is very simple. It means that you live a righteous life. We are not yet on the holy, okay, and acceptable. And the Bible says you have to present those animals that are being offered in the Old Testament has been chosen by God Himself. And God is giving the criteria to those who are going to give to offer to God on how are they going to do it, isn't it? The criteria back then and now is still the same. While you and I are going to present ourselves to God, as you all know in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, God never called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness. In our text in the past, Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. The changes is very important. And one of the changes that would be seen and the result of that is that you are striving to live a righteous life before God. Are there Christians who are very much aware of that and conscious enough to live a righteous life? Sir, you're wrong. We cannot live that 100%. Yes, we cannot because we are all sinners saved by grace. But at least one of the things that God would see from you and from your heart is that you try to strive to do the best that you could to live the righteous life in accordance to the demand and the declaration of the scripture. We have the pattern. We have the book to follow. We do not make our own laws. Regardless of how good in terms of moral uh, standards that you have, the standard that we need to follow is from the Word of God. To be renewed by God, by your mind, is from the Word of God. And so, it says to lead. In Matthew 6, 33, we know that. Seek ye praise the kingdom of God. And I read the word and his righteousness. The word righteousness there, I, I challenge you. And when you get back home, search it. It means the word of God that needs to be embedded into your heart. That needs to be lived with. That needs to be practiced in our day-to-day -day life. That means it is God's perfect will for you to live. We cannot do that 100%. We are not hypocrite. But God knows the heart of a person who tries to strive and beg for God's mercy and to be humble enough, Lord, by your grace, I do the best that I could. And God would be happy enough. But if you are not so concerned, so conscious about those things and your position before, you don't care. You just ignore it. It's just enough. I'm a Christian. I can come to the church once in a while. I can just do this. My friend, it is a day-to-day -day accountability. Not just responsibility. A day-to-day -day accountability before God. Eventually, you know that to live a righteous life is a day-to-day -day accountability before God. Romans 14, 12. If I got the right number. Look at it, the Romans. Very clear. Romans, so then every one of us shall give what? Account of himself to God. Every Wednesday, we are studying the book of Ecclesiastes. I wrap it up, right? Then we're going to be on chapter 10. In chapter 12, that will be the last King Solomon himself. He said, let us conclude the whole matters. Fear God and serve Him. For God shall bring everything into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And this is it. Someday, you and I will be facing God. Are you aware of that? See, life of a Christianity is not that so easy. It's not that how big we are. It's not how short. It is our personal intimacy and relationship and then how we respond to the Lord's demand uh, to us. So, to comply, it means that you and I, we are to live a righteous life. In John, 1 John 2, 29. 1 John 2, 29. If you know that He is righteous, 
He said, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is what? Is born of him. Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Secondly, before we go to the last, things to comply by presenting yourself that you take and keep the right standards. Do not only live a righteous life. How are you able to live? How am I able to live a righteous life? By simply taking and keeping the right standards. See, as I have said, when the Lord demands the patriarchs as well as the great men in the Old Testament, like for example, when Noah, after the flood, before he made uh, that altar for the he did ask him and tell him also what is supposed to be done, what is supposed to be taken. When Abraham and even Elijah, there is always the thing that God would tell them exactly how it's going to be done. The same thing in our time today. As we offer ourselves to God, let's make it more personal, ourselves personally, how am I offering myself to God? How am I going to present myself to God? Ask yourself. A righteous life? And what is more? Take the standards and keep the standards that God wants me to have. Remember, when we follow God, don't make any conditions. Because God has already laid it out. So, it means to say... We have to keep the right stand. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, look at it in verse 7. Oh no, just only one verse, one verse of that. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children's children. Children shall talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and so on. But before this, the Lord said, these words that I have given to you, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And teach them to thy children's children. The Lord said, you want your people, you want your family to be blessed of God, have the standard of God's word. As parents, we have that great responsibility towards our children. That's why we were encouraged. Plus, on top of that, before you would be able to, uh, to uh, teach and to pass it, that you have to learn to live it for yourself. And uh, to do the standards that God is expecting you to keep and to hold and to do likewise. Because how in the world would be able to expect your children to do things when you yourself has never been a good example to them. Can you expect your children not to curse when you yourself is cursing? Wag kang magmura, pero ikaw naman mura ka ng mura. Wag kang wino. Don't, don't drink wine and so on. And yet they can say it to you. And other things. And what kind of example are you? It's not because you're just meeting the needs financially for them today as they grew up and so on. But the Lord's expectation from His people is that we are to train our children the way that they should be, not the way that they want to be. The way that they should be. In the light of the Scripture. And the Lord said, Teach them to thy children's children. That is to comply. As we offer ourselves, you have to live righteous life. You have to keep the right standards. Deuteronomy 26, verse 16, last verse, it says, This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Did God, uh, did God say, okay, what I have given it to you, just in, tell it and teach it to your children and implement it to them even if you don't practice it? 
God never said that. Sometimes you want our children to grow up a good person and so on, try to do the best that we could. My friend, you're just talking about temporal and moral standards, but what is more important before God is spiritual things that they can keep for themselves. Even when we leave this world, they have the things that they can treasure so much. He brought them near to God. And the Lord said that you have to keep them and do them. He said, do and keep. And then he said, with all thy heart and with all thy soul while you live. Parents, I encourage you today. Have you ever prayed for your children? Perhaps you might say, it's already too late, Pastor. My friend, I've never seen any too late before God. They might not be with us presently, but you know one of the best gifts that you can offer to God for them, to pray for them, to guide that God would guide them and keep them from anything, and that God would help them to understand the spiritual thing. That alone is a sufficient blessing that you can achieve. I'm praying for my children, as I've said every day when I wake up in the morning. God knows that. My daughter in the Philippines, and she is far well off now, and she is very happy, I guess. <laughs> she is not seeing her father for quite long. <laughs> Hannah! Hannah! Po! Po! No more Hannah. No more calling. But you know, I'm only praying, Lord, you protect her every day. But the things that she needs to keep is no other than you, loving you more than because I cannot protect her more than what you can do. Mm. And I entrust her to you. And God does that. Pray for me, pray for my wife. And I always teach you about uh, me and my wife. I said, Lord, when you're going to call us, please call me together with my wife. <laughs> so that uh, she won't be enjoying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You see, as I'm always saying, Lord, if it, it, it is only possible, but if not, whatever you do. But you know, one of the good things that we can communicate with our God, and the Lord will be listened sometimes of our stupidity, but God is uh, happy enough to see that you still trust and beg Him uh, on how He's going to take things for you. And that's a wonderful thing. That's our God. And last, and I end up in here, uh, things to comply, not only to live a righteous life, you have to take and keep the right standard that you have to have a rejoicing heart. When we offer ourselves, I hope my friend and beloved in the Lord, it's not a burden. You sing in the choir, it's not a burden. You, you, you go soul winning like we it's not a burden. No. One of the things before I end up, when we started Mount Olive Baptist Church in the Philippines, fast forward, we know we started from the garage, seeing the sun and everything. Now fast forward, God has blessed that work because it is His work. And now we have no less than 20 Mount Olive Baptist Church in the Philippines that did start from that device. Whose glory? is God. Who started those new work? It's not me anymore. But God did touch other people's lives. That's why whenever you hear and see Mount Olives Baptist Church in the Philippines, it did come only from one Baptist Church, Mount Olives, in Nobalitsis, Quezon City. That is the brand that they have. Mount Holy Baptist Church. And I say, Lord, whenever I see this and I talk to them once in a while, nightly, uh, Pastor says, I talked to him a while ago before I left. Uh, they have in Tarla, uh, somebody donated 1,000 square meters and they gave the 400 square meters uh, for the church free. That 400 square meters. And somebody also, brother, build the building of the church free for the work. And we only gave 300 bucks for 
do sa gate but the building and so on as you know it's very expensive yesterday yesterday that was sunday they had their 10th anniversary and most of the Mount Olive Baptist Church gathered together and had fellowship and whenever I see that I just have my simple cry before God and I said Lord, Lord look what you have done to your God was it because of me? no sir we're just nothing but because God knows that work is His it's not ours and God bless us it's more. There's one thing. I keep on encouraging, just keep going on. And I asked the guy now, whom do you think the pastor who needed most help, not only in the banks but financial, just let me know. I would support you. Because I have nothing anymore to think about the thing that we're thinking about. Because time would come when we will face the Lord. I love that so what a fellowship, what a joy divide living on the everlasting times that there is always the joy in the presence of Jesus. So, when we do things, when we offer ourselves, I hope it's not a burden. It's a blessing. When you offer something to the Lord, I hope it comes from your heart. You do rejoice. In the first place, the Bible says, God loves a cheerful people. That you do it because you're being burdened so much and so on. It's not the amount that comes. It is your attitude. It's your heart. How you bring back to God an expression of your being grateful and gratitude to the world. And that's exactly what Paul was saying. Present yourself a living sacrifice. A righteous life. A right standard. Rejoicing in serving the Lord. Next Sunday would be our last Sunday. He said, Holy and acceptable unto God. I'll be explaining that holy and why it is acceptable. And that's the only way that we can now say for ourselves, which is our reasonable service. And that's a great thing. You and I would aim that your service to the Lord. The word reasonable, it means hindi na sayang. It didn't come to nothing. It didn't fail and it didn't go to nothing. It was very much acknowledged and appreciated by God. Because He met the standard that needs to be met. May God bless us. And again, I want to invite you on our Wednesday. Please do pray for that radio station of ours. I already uh, applied for the license, and uh, they, they'll be giving a uh, certain, I don't know, what, mega, mega, whatever may, and let's do so. Plus what Brother Ben is doing of our and our YouTube, we'll do all those things. And one of my dreams, uh, made prayer before God, before God, then sign me off. Then I have to do so. Okay, let's all stand up, please. And join us on our last brother Peter now. Dismiss us in order of prayer, please. Father, we have just uh, had your word opened and uh, exposed to us. The great God of creation is also the great God who creates the new life in us. For mm -hmm. so what? Will a man give for the redemption of a soul? Yes, Lord. Can he redeem his brother? No, he can. Even though he tries. For the redemption of a soul is costly. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, mm. and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive them and cleanse, and will heal their land. Do we take your word seriously, God Elohim, God Yahweh? We stand in fault before you. Week after week we hear your word. Week after week we hear your instructions, yes, Lord. your guidance, your chiding, and we turn away and walk in our evil. Cleanse us and forgive us. 
you have all ordered and authorized us to ask for forgiveness of our sins because else we don't do it and think of ourselves as righteous men and women but to fall down humbly before you in total submission to you is the delight of your heart to seek your word mm. when we get up to tie it around our foreheads is your instruction to speak it to our children is your authority over us and to guide our souls and our spirit by it and those around us is but the delight of your spirit in us O righteous one cleanse us of our short faults and our shortcomings deliberately done or undeliberately done whether it is in stupidity or whether it is in purposefulness father we are humans mm -hmm. and we ask father that you will cleanse us yes on that day we are going to pay an account for everything we have done yes for every word idle word we have spoken do we take this seriously no we don't because we would rather listen to the evil one and the ways of the evil one that denies your word rather than instruct ourselves according to it and begin to change our ways and again we have heard from our father from your word to rectify our ways to rectify our thinking mm. to change our behavior and we be but take it seriously and yes father we stand here before you as people that have been saved by grace mm. as people who have been washed by the blood of Christ would we take that seriously and seek another soul to speak to and seek another person who is fallen by the wayside and re and restore him encourage him Oh, that we would turn our eyes from the affairs of this world, from the corruptness of this world, and seek after you. Put aside those things that will easily beset us in sin mm. and in contrition, Father, and turn to you. May we always, always put Jesus Christ first. Yes. Put the Holy Spirit first. Put the authority of the Bible first, and walk in your ways, Lord. We also pray, Father, that we would instruct those around us, and that you would use us as instruments mm -hmm. in your hand, Father. People who want to be used, people who seek to be used, Father, and people who discern within ourselves that we are but frail, and that we need the power of your Spirit in us daily and moment by moment. We thank you again for the gracious words that we have heard. Now we ask that your Spirit embed it into our very minds, mm. into the minds of our heart, into the heart of our mind, that we may walk as you would have us walk. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join us in our lunch, and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.